Recycling in the Low Country is bolstered by the state, county standardized test grades are in, and the county sheriff wants an exception to the new texting ban for first responders. Get ready, Hilton Head. Your news starts now. Greetings, Hilton Head. I'm Kevin Libby, in for Ally McNair. The grades are in. Standardized tests administered this past school year around the county showed Beaufort County Public Schools continue to make gains. The school district maintained its overall B average under a new state grading system. Within the district, six schools failed to meet expectations, two more than last year. Superintendent of Schools Dr. Jeffrey Moss sees progress, quote, We are moving in the right direction and staying focused on building some very positive momentum. On high school exit exams, county students surpassed the state averages for the second consecutive year with 84% of students passing on their first attempt. The state sales tax holiday has come and passed. Bolstered by back-to-school shoppers, this past weekend saw retailers flooded by bargain hunters. Many sales coincided with the tax holiday and with families with school-aged children spending on average about $600 to get ready for the school year, the relief was well appreciated according to a uh, survey from the National Retail Federation. If you didn't do your shopping this past weekend, put some gas in the tank. Georgia grants their sales tax holiday this upcoming weekend. Beaufort County will soon be a little bit greener. The State Department of Health and Environmental Control has granted $65,000 across three state grants that will support solid waste, and area, solid waste and recycling projects here in the area. Beaufort County Solid Waste and Recycling Director Jim Miner said, quote, I commend my staff for their exceptional effort in developing the proposals and commitment to improving service while saving money. The Sheriff's Office is implementing a new search and rescue program, joining the National Project Lifesaver program. Designed to track and rescue persons with Alzheimer's disease, autism, dementia, and other disability, program participants wear transmitter bracelets that emit a constant signal. The program, utilized by about 1,200 law enforcement officials across 45 states, is welcoming Beaufort County to the program. Quote, Beaufort County Sergeant Katrina Light, who leads the local effort, says she expects the program to be up within a month. This is going to be a huge benefit to the office, she said. A Sun City woman injured Friday in a shooting at her home died Sunday at Savannah Hospital. Found during a health and welfare check Friday, Rosalind Jacobson, age 80, was found with her husband Robert, age 85, who had passed from what is believed to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. An investigation into the shooting is underway. Researchers at Coastal Carolina University on Thursday unveiled a new hurricane model program named after the devastating Category 4 Hurricane Hugo that struck in 1989. Hurricane Genesis and Outlook, the new Hugo, predicts where hurricanes will hit with consideration for storm surge and flooding. The model hopes to accurately predict the course of hurricanes at least five days prior to landfall. Taking a look around the state, a South Carolina barbecue trail is gaining traction as state tourism officials are spending $1.2 million in promotion. The $3.5 million advertising campaign, which will begin this fall, includes highlights of the state's rural culture. South Carolina barbecue is just one of the featured themes, as over the past two years, South Carolina legislators have granted $20 million to the state's tourism agency. That is the biggest increase of any government agency. Senator Lindsey Graham is making headlines, indicating during an appearance on CNN Sunday that he and Senator John McCain are planning a trip to Egypt. Since the ouster of President Mohamed Morsi, Egypt has recaptured the eyes of the world with its first taste of democracy. Quote, I know it's dangerous, but we need to be there with our diplomats giving the unified message to Egypt. Do not let these people drive us out of the Mideast. That's what Graham said on State of the Union to Candy Crowley. Quote, I'm going to Egypt because my country needs me, he continued. Graham seeks re-election for his Senate seat in 2014. A study published by the Tax Foundation and the Maryland Public Policy Institute discovered that South Carolina's $26 billion pension fund paid the highest investment fee of any of the 35 states studied. That's with respect to the ratio of the aggregate capital. South Carolina's pension investment fees have been criticized by State Treasurer Curtis Loftus, who claims the fees are excessive. The fund posted a return of 12.39% in calendar year 2012, adding $3 billion to the total value of the fund. The study claims that by indexing most portfolios, the state funds, state funds surveyed could save $6 billion in fees annually. South Carolina's pension funds paid a total of $296 million in investment fees for fiscal year 2012, about 1.3% of assets. 
Herschel Harper, the state's investment commission's chief investment official, stated, quote, someone is making a grave error in judgment if they think our goal is to maximize return, period, and ignore the liabilities. I can't pay benefits with peer rankings, he said. Presently, the account is funded at 60% of value. 2014 can't come soon enough for Governor Nikki Haley. She'll be holding a $1,000 per couple fundraiser at the home of developer Bob Hughes for her upcoming 2014 gubernatorial re-election bid. Three Republican governors will be helping her garner funds, including Bobby Jindal of Louisiana, Rick Perry of Texas, and Scott Walker of Wisconsin. The trio spoke last week at a red state gathering in New Orleans. And when we return, we'll find what's smoldering in the press room with B.J. Frazier of the Hilton Head Sun, and Charlie Clark will bring us our business report. Stay tuned, Hilton Head. We'll be right back. I'm here at the top of the Harbor Town Lighthouse with Nadia Wagner. She's the lighthouse keeper. Nadia, this is a Hilton Head icon, but many people don't realize it's so much more. It is, Debbie. The view is so thrilling. Many people don't realize you can climb to the top. We've had many marriage proposals, even weddings. You can shop at the top for gifts you won't find anywhere else and wave to friends and family on our live webcam. It's the high point of the Lowcountry. You do not want to miss this view. What's the admission cost, Nadia? It's only $3.75 per person and kids five and under are free. Make this a must see while you're here on Hilton Head. Thanks, Nadia. Thank you. See you soon. Welcome back to the Hilton Head News. B.J. Frazier joins us now from the Hilton Head Sun. Welcome, B.J. How you doing, Kevin? I'm well, thank you. Good. I understand there was a brainstorming me meeting recently. What storms came out of those brains? Uh, well, the, uh, as you know, the Shelter Cove uh, Town Center is well under construction now. It's going to be a beautiful uh, facility. It's going to have, you know, like dozens of great stores. And they're, they're, the meeting was all about uh, what they're going to do with a linear, linear park that's going to connect the town center to the Chaplin uh, Community Park. And uh, there were about a couple of dozen residents there and they came up with ideas, anything from a seasonal market selling seasonal goods to a butterfly garden to a Gullah historical site. So there's a lot of input going on because the traffic is eventually gonna be tremendous, people walking, enjoying the area and so forth. So we'll see what develops. BJ, if it's written correctly, it tells me someone is being trashed on the island. Is that something to do with drinking? What's going on? Uh, no, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's the residents that are being trashed because uh, Republic Waste uh, Management has had the contract and uh, just signed a five-year agreement with the town to do the recycling and trash co collection. And since mid-June, mid there's been over 200 complaints by residents about missed pickups. And now this is the same company last year that had the, the complaints. And of course, once they were lodged, it improved a little bit, but now you know, they're back to their old tricks. And uh, I don't know what the council's gonna do, but they're gonna meet and probably discuss this and we'll see if they're gonna do anything about the breach of, of this agreement. Yeah, I mean, garbage is one of those essential things in any community. Uh, BJ, I understand you're also gonna update us on what's going on at Caligny. What's new down there? Well, again, uh, about 200 residents and business owners and property owners packed the town hall recently because talking about the redevelopment plan that's been talked about forever, but they're gonna try and get it going now. And the residents and the business people said, first priority has to be traffic and parking because as we know on a, on a hot summer day, it's pretty, pretty brutal down there, uh, not only the heat, but the traffic and the, and the parking and so forth. And there's also some concern about a tentative plan, or at least discussion, about use, moving some, uh, building a new building for USCB uh, to put some classrooms down there. Now, the town would love that because it would, you know, give them a different base to work off of. But, but in the meantime, the residents and property owners and business people are saying, no way. Let's get the parking and the traffic straightened out before we even talk about that. So stay tuned. Absolutely. BJ, we always appreciate your coming on and updating us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Kevin. Joining me now is our good friend, Charlie Clark. Hi, Charlie. Hi. 
Charlie, the Chamber recently received a national award. Tell us about that. We did. You know, recently the Chamber received an award for communications excellence. It's a national award put out by ACCE, which is sort of the largest governing organization of Chambers of Commerce, for our website, thinkhiltonheadisland.org. It's a popular website. It's becoming even more popular and was recognized for being a little unusual and something that Chambers across the nation might want to emulate. So who are these people using this now very popular website? You know, it's everything from startup businesses to well-established businesses. It's a website, thinkhiltonetisland.org, and you can also go to thinkbluffton.org. has a wealth of information, everything from census information at a national level, local level, demographics, psychographics information on tourism and the role it plays in our community and statistics that go along with that. So recently, for example, one of our major hotels utilized it as a resource to sort of describe why we might want to do a multi-million dollar renovation on their property just to kind of back up some facts and figures to back up uh, the needs of any business, large or small. And what can visitors find if they go to Hilton, uh, excuse me, thinkhiltonheadisland.org? You know, it's really up to you. Businesses are using it for a variety of reasons, as we talked about. As a startup, you might use it differently than a more established business, but it's a place you're going to find information when it comes to national census information. You're going to be able to locate cost of living index, real estate information. Just, it's really a one-stop shop. That was the goal of thinkhiltonheadisland.org, was to put all that information that as a business you usually, usually have to go to a variety of different sources for all in one convenient place. So you're seeing some good results for local businesses talking about the statistical data available on the site. Absolutely. You know, last year alone we had over 19,000 page views for thinkhiltonheadisland.org, which goes to show us that people are definitely utilizing that. In the past, what would happen, we have a lot of calls, as you can imagine, as a Chamber of Commerce for that information. It gives people a place to stop maybe before they pick up the phone and, as we said, one-stop shop for all the information they might need for their business resources. Charlie, I've heard many realtors say it's today's visitors, they're tomorrow's residents. Uh, what do you think the reach of thinkhiltonheadisland.org will be when it comes to people wanting to relocate? Well, you know, it's interesting. Today, the model for economic development it can be different for a town like ours. And when so many visitors are coming, when you have 2.5 million visitors, it's also an opportunity. Those people who come here now that you can do business from just about any place, thanks to technology, a great way for them to see a beautiful place might be a great place to do business as well. Thinkhiltonheadisland.org can help in that endeavor. Great. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks. Stay tuned. When we return, we'll have great information for women, and our amazing station manager, Wayne Morris, will join us as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Weston Hilton Head Island Resort and Spa is celebrating its grand renewal. Relax and unwind at the totally renovated resort featuring new pools, lush gardens and courtyards, guest rooms, ballroom, main lobby conservatory and more. Enjoy family fun on the beach, improve your game with unparalleled golf, indulge your senses with newly inspired low country cuisine in our refreshed restaurants including Oceanfront View 32 and Barony Bar and rejuvenate at the Heavenly Spa. Stay for a night, a weekend, or more at the Weston Hilton Head Island Resort and Spa. Be well, be Weston. Welcome back to the Hilton Head News. Joining me now is our favorite spot guest, Wayne Morris, the wonderful station manager here at mm -hmm. WHHI. How's it going, Wayne? Hey, Kevin. I'm good. How are you, man? Thanks for filling in. We appreciate it. Oh, always happy to be here. Same to you. Good. Uh, Wayne, one of my favorite things to watch in WHHI is local high school football. Tell oh, me yeah. that's coming up. Uh, man, we're so excited. Um, this will be our sixth season of local high school football, and um, it's going to be better than ever. We have our best schedule ever um, covering the entire low country, Beaufort, Jasper, and Hampton counties. Um, we're starting August 23rd. It's hard to believe, but um, you know all the college camps and pro camps, are back in session and, and the high schoolers are no different. They started practice recently as well and um, we're just starting to get that, that feel in the air that football season's near and it's uh, really a huge opportunity for our station every year uh, just to go out and cover youth athletics and, and cover these, these communities and these schools and these families so uh, we couldn't be happier that, that high school football is only what three weeks away so we're very very excited. Yeah it's a great thing to go into the community and actually be a part of it when you get to cover some of those high school football games. It is, man, and they're, and they're great games, too, a lot of them. I mean, every year we have a couple of just nail biters um, in, the, in the region. Um, you know, obviously Bluffton's had a great three or four year run. 
Uh, Beaufort's a traditional power. Hilton Head High School is, um, is building back to where they used to be. They've got a great coach. This will be his second year. Um, Hilton Head Prep and Hilton Head Christian always feel competitive teams. Uh, Thomas Hayward played Hilton Head Christian in the state championship last year. Um, and then Battery Creek and Whale Branch are two other schools that we're covering um, who've got great talent um, and just, you know, we're hoping to put it all together this year and just have great seasons. Uh, switching gears a little bit, I understand that the uh, real estate market has changed in South Carolina. What's WHHI doing to educate our community around that? Well, we've, uh, we've, ha we've had a long-standing show called the RETV Show. And basically that's for market updates, um, insights with some of the most uh, well-known realtors in our area like Charles Sampson and James Wedgworth and just you know some of the big names in the area. Um, and, and that still remains and you can go to our website and check our schedule for when that airs. And then we have a new show as well called The Real Estate News. And what we've done is we've partnered with um, uh, the Hilton Head MLS, the Buford MLS, um, both Association of Realtors, the Builders Associations, and we are compiling information uh, to put this show together from all those great resources. And we have uh, the show airs uh, eight times a week and it's hosted by Jenny Lockhart, who's been on the mortgage side of that business as well. So she's very familiar with how it works. And um, you know, the first uh, five or six minutes are headlines, uh, breaking news, uh, things that are happening that are affecting us each week here uh, in our community. And then uh, the back half of the show, we have real estate partners and they give us reports on local real estate, whether it's a specific listing or an open house they have coming up, or just some market information and lifestyle information. So we've got real estate covered here on WHHI and um, we couldn't be more excited. Wayne, we're almost out of time, but we know that our subscribers can find us on Time Warner as well as Hargrave. Yes. Are there any other places that people can find WHHI? Yes, absolutely. Well, that's what we're working on. Of course, you can go to our website and it links to YouTube. Our YouTube channel is just tremendous. If you, you can check out our stats, they're, they're really uh, significant. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to get on DirecTV and we're trying to get on Dish Network. And if you are watching this broadcast online and you have either one of those providers, uh, you can go to our website, whhhitv.com, and on the right banner, uh, you can click and it'll take you to a submission form to request WHHI uh, on your current provider. And they can, they can put us on there, um, but we have to let them know that there's a demand. So if we get enough, enough information and enough letters uh, sent into those two providers, you could very soon have uh, WHHI in your home if you have one of those uh, director dish. Thank you so much, Wayne. Always a pleasure to have you on the broadcast. Thank you. And joining me now is Tammy Blank from Cribs for Kids. Welcome, Tammy. Hi. Tammy, Welcome. what is the group Kappa Delta and what do you do? Kappa Delta is a collegiate sorority. Um, we're the alumni group from that. We promote in, in colleges fellowship and sisterhood with our members and then carry that on into community service. So the uh, um, alumni groups, well, we already are members of that. We can carry our, our service into the communities where we now live. So where did you go to school and how did you first get involved? I went to school and joined Kappa Delta at Oregon State University. I was an only child and I needed sisterhood so that was really good for me and then I joined the um, Kappa Delta group here in its formation three years ago. Are you still OSU for college sports all the way? Or not a sports fan? I wa no I'm a sports fan and it takes <laughs> Oregon State and my husband is University of Oregon so anytime either one of them are playing we're watching. Sometimes it's a little hard to get a uh, broadcast around here locally to watch. But the, the, rival, the rivalry lives. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Tammy, tell me about the Cribs for Kids program. The um, Cribs for Kids is not a, a Kappa Delta specific group. It is a part of the Kappa of Buford organization, which is um, Child Abuse Prevention Association. They got the Cribs for Kids idea from a group in Pennsylvania. It provides, <clears throat> they provide cribs for families who can't afford an individual safe sleeping environment for their children. The um, cribs are provided to the parents and to any of the other caretakers so that the children are not 
inadvertently abused by being rolled over on by their um, siblings or their parents and smothered. So it's been a really big help in the, the first step in child abuse is getting you know, the infant up to being child-sized. Um, Kappa Delta, one of their main philanthropies is child abuse and care of children and nurturing and Girl Scouts. Well, they set up a foundation <coughs> that is uh, kids, Kappa Delta for kids, that gives us money to be able to fund back into our own communities on programs that are specifically for kids. That's wonderful, Tammy, and such a need indeed. Uh, thank you so much for doing it. Stick with us. When we return, Nancy Watts will tell us what's to do here in the island in your popular report. Don't touch that remote, Hilton Head. We'll be right back. Welcome to Brown Golf, where playing here has its rewards. Purchase a 20-round package of golf prior to May 1, 2013, and receive a full day with yours truly. That's 18 holes of golf, two-hour mini school, and lunch. To purchase that package, go to browngolfmanagement.com. That's browngolfmanagement.com. Now, let's go humble the golf course. Welcome back to the Hilton Head News. Joining me now is Nancy Watts of wheretogohiltonhead.com. Welcome, Nancy. Man, I'm glad to be back here. How are you? I'm great. It's nice to see you. Tell me, what's going on this week? Oh, my goodness. It's a good week. It's always a good week on Hilton Head, let me tell you. We've got an organ concert on Friday. We've got, in fact, if you've never been to that organ concert, and many people have not, they, they are, there's some wonderful organists on this island. And just cut, slip in, sit down, have a little quiet meditation, and enjoy the music. Then, of course, just right next door is the, uh, is the Imagination Hour with the children. Uh, the Sandbox is right there with Take Your Babies Over or Take Your Grandchildren Over. It gives you a wonderful opportunity to watch them play and to learn so much about them as they play and as they learn. Imagine Hour sounds like a lot of fun. Tell me, is there anything going on in the world of wine? Oh my goodness, oh yes, <laughs> there is. Um, the Island Winery has, you know, they open at 1230 and then they have wine flights. That's a, wine flight is, is a group of, of three wines so that you don't just taste one wine, you taste three. And uh, that happens. Then there's a happy hour in the afternoon. There's a barrel tasting on Friday. There's just so much to learn about wines that are actually are actually produced. They're not produced here, but they are bottled here on the island. Get yours, get them autographed, take them home to your friends, and have a good time. So they don't bottle them, but they let us drink them, so that, as long as the priorities are in order. Uh, Nancy, tell us about Harbor Fest and where we can find the best music this week. Oh my, my. It's, it's almost, the season is almost over, but you've got a couple more weeks. Be sure you get over to Harbor Fest. Tuesday nights, particularly, they have um, Shannon Tanner, who, who um, entertains the children. The, there have been some really nice pictures, too, of, of him entertaining the children, and they, of course, are so, so cute. Greg Russell, also down at Harbortown, will uh, entertain your children down there. He, he entertains on Sunday through Friday, and uh, Shannon Tanner entertains Monday through Saturday. So you've got a combination of, of somebody to go and enjoy with your children and your family anytime you're here. Nancy, you always take care of us with the best things to do on the island. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for watching. For all your local news, be sure to tune to WHHI-TV first. I'm Kevin Libby. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.